to wrap up, let me just give you a couple of extra words about why I think it's really useful to use R Markdown in your workflow. So there's a couple of practical questions that come up when you start to adopt data science tools in your academic toolbox. So you might ask yourself whether it wouldn't be great if you could have your code for your data analysis, uh, your results and your explanatory text together in the same document. It might also be great if when you wrote your manuscript, uh, the data in your tables and your figures and so on were actually generated directly from your data so that if your data changes, then you could just click a button and everything in your manuscript would be automatically updated. And it would also be great if you could have peace of mind that you used a file format that was future proof so that you would always be able to open your text again in the future, no matter what happens to Microsoft Word or, or, or Google and so on and so forth. Our Markdown is an attempt to help you in all of these respects. So as we already saw, it is something you can use as, as an interactive notebook where you can have your code results and text in the same document and where we can have our, uh, as we'll see shortly, we, we can have our results automatically uh, generated at the point uh, of compiling this into a specific uh, output format. It's also f future proof because it's simply plain text that you can open up in any text editor. So you don't have uh, this problem. Um, and it's also plain text format that has a more human friendly syntax than alternatives such as uh, LaTeX. So in LaTeX, for example, if you want to do uh, make something bold, the syntax for that is backslash text BF curly braces you know, the content, then the curly brace end. In Markdown, which is the syntax that our Markdown uses, you just make two asterisks on either side. So it's really, really designed to be something that you can also read as an ordinary human, just read looking at the plain text. It can be quite intoxicating uh, when you start using our Markdown in the beginning. Here's one of my favorite Twitter threads of all times from Professor Heather Uri at uh, uh, Tufts University where she wrote that uh, she was so excited that she could get a new PDF compiled in a matter of seconds with all of the results, text stats, tables, figures, updated uh, automatically throughout the manuscript like magic. It's like goddamn freaking magic. And then she uh, concluded that if you think you'll ever be in the position of having to redo stats for a manuscript at some point, and come on, you know you will, then invest some time in establishing a reproducible manuscript workflow. This will be increasingly true also in Hindu studies the more you begin to adopt some of these data science tools. So thinking about how to have reproducible workflows from the outset is really going to be a big benefit. So again, an R Markdown file is simply a file that you save with the extension .rmd. And as we saw in the previous videos, there are, it has uh, sort of three different components. There is a header with some information about, like, say, the title of our document. There is a text itself written with a Markdown syntax. And then there are chunks of code, uh, typically in R, but it, it could also be in R other programming languages. And the real benefit is that we have multiple output formats from the same source file. So in addition to using an R Markdown file as an interactive notebook, as we saw in the videos, we can also output to HTML, uh, to a Word document, to a PowerPoint, to a PDF. Um, we also saw that we can output it to a dashboard and much, much, much more. I write all of my academic papers in R Markdown and there are extensions uh, that for it that you can use to have everything in terms of you know, academic references, cross-references, cross and so on and so forth. Let me just give you a quick demo of this. So I'm just going to open up my RStudio project file again here. And then I'll actually just try to create a new R Markdown file. So I'm just going to click File up here in the top, and then New File, and then R Markdown. And I'll write, uh, this is my test documents. Let's call it that as its, as its title. And click OK. 
and I'm just going to make this full height. And then I'm just going to save this file. Let's just call it my my test. My test, why not? Save. So you'll see now is, this is saved in my working directory. So now I have this R markdown file, my test uh, here. We can, act, we can also see that if I just look at the um, folder here, if I open this up in something else, I could open this up in, say, let's just open this up in text edits. You can see that I see, I see the same thing as I do, oops. So you see that, that what I see over here with the, in where it's in our studio has these nice sort of color highlighting and so on. I see exactly the same thing over here in text edit, uh, just without the um, just without the, the the highlighting and so on. So it's but it looks exactly the same. So this is just a plain text file that gets special powers when you open it up in our studio. So um, <clears throat> there is this little button here that is called knits. When I click that, then it's going to create the output format that is specified inside the R markdown file. So you see up here in the top, it says output HTML document. And then when I knit, then I get this cool looking um, HTML from it. And I can see that if I look at the, um, the folder now, yeah, I have this HTML file. Again, I can op open that up, then I'll see this opened up in my web browser. I can uh, do all sorts of interesting things, particularly with HTML documents. So for example, I could add like TOC true here. And then if I click knit again, then I get a table of contents in my, uh, in my um, HTML output here. Boom. I can also output to other formats. Oh, let me write uh, word document here. Then if I knit, then we will see, oh yes, now there's this uh, Word document uh, appearing. Oh, for some reason Skype is opening up for me. <laughs> I'm just gonna kill, kill Skype. Uh, so I can open that up in Word. Very, very useful. And we could also, um, I like to actually output stuff to Word and then upload the Word file to Google Docs and then share a Google Doc link with my collaborators for, for comments. Uh, and I can also output to, PS, to, uh, output to a PDF document. When I output to PDF, that's actually done via LaTeX. So you will need a LaTeX installation on your computer in order to output uh, to PDF. There we go. And of course, there are ways to then use uh, templates as well. So when I write academic papers, for example, I'll typically be using the template LaTeX file for a given journal or conference and then use that together with, uh, with R Markdown. The final thing I'll say is that um, when we deal with Sanskrit text in particular, we might sometimes uh, run into some slight um, challenges when we uh, output to PDF. And let me just give you, show you an example here. So I'm just going to open up the um, analysis example here and I'm just gonna try out outputting this to PDF, a PDF document, where I think I will get an error message now and I'll get it because the default LaTeX engine might have a problem with some Unicode characters that will be used to encode particular transliteration characters uh, for, for Sanskrit. There's ways uh, around that and I'll show you how now. So you can actually, you, you have complete control basically. So I'm going to set the LaTeX engine here to Z LaTeX uh, instead of PDF LaTeX, which I think is the, the, the default. So let's see whether we actually get uh, an error message here in the first instance. Um, so the reason this takes a while is because, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, uh, maybe I should just use the important clean example. Never mind. So this is, uh, <laughs> so this takes a while because it, this is the example analysis that is splitting the text up in biograms and counting those. And that does 
take a bit of time because um, there's a lot of text in Mahabharata in particular. Actually, let me, I'm, I'm just going to stop uh, stop this and I'm just going to uh, turn the important clean example into a PDF document instead. Because I think them, that might also give me an error message, but it will just uh, take much less time. Yes, there we go. Uh, you'll see we get we get this error message now where we are told that the Unicode character N with a dot under is not set up for use with LaTeX. Basically, yeah, so we also get some some hints here um, about what we might try. So try other using other LaTeX engines instead. E.g. C LaTeX if you're using PDF LaTeX. So, and we also kind of get a uh, reference here to a really, really useful project underway, the R Markdown Cookbook, which has a lot of practical uh, guides around using uh, R Markdown for all sorts of different things. It's an amazing resource. So we'll see that if we follow the guidance here, and if I set LaTeX engine to be Z LaTeX, and then click the knit button. Then I think, with a little, <laughs> with a little help of my friends, with a little <laughs> luck, then this will work now. See, the good thing about YouTube is that you can fast forward on YouTube. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so this this time it actually worked. So we can see our data import process here. So all of the stuff we looked at in our analyses, yeah, we can, we can, we can get this uh, we can get this out in the formats that we want, which is great and useful. So the final thing I'll say is just that this concludes the final video uh, of these what ended up being six videos. I hope that this has been useful. Let me just say that uh, as you will hopefully have seen there is a lot and lot of power um, available uh, in to analyze text in new ways. If you learn something about how to use programming languages uh, such as R to do uh, analysis and visualization, so the maximum of power and flexibility you can get here is obviously going to come from you yourself becoming a wizard in this so that you can bend the world to your will and automate anything you want to automate and so on and so forth. I think for real life teams in Hindu studies here, I think a, a perhaps more realistic path forward is to think about how you can work with data scientists, get a, an in-house data scientist where you might be do, able to then do things like um, what I mentioned in the last video, for example, have your in-house data scientist create interactive web apps or dashboards for you that explore the data in the ways that you would like uh, to uh, to explore it uh, and that make key parameters available to you as an explorer of the data uh, to be able to play around with without you having to go down the path of trying to learn R and R studio uh, yourself. So, with that, I'm going to end this video series. Again, I hope this, this has been useful. Thank you very much for tuning in. Bye.